Hello, Telecom TV is here at the SDN NFE World Congress 2018 in The Hague in the Netherlands and I'm talking with Domenico Convertino. Domenico, good to see you again. We're going to talk about zero-touch operations and OSS transformation, so let's get straight into it. How can CSPs accelerate the monetization of NFE cloud-based services? What we see is that uh, the agility that the virtualized environment will bring to CSP will for sure help them uh, on uh, offer more digital services, more over-the-top services on top uh, of the typical uh, catalog they are, offering, uh, they are offering today. This will open uh, new revenue streams for them and will allow them to even uh, leverage the actual wave that is present in the industries related to the digital transformation. They can really sell more digital stuff to their end customers. Thank you, concise answer. So let's move on to zero touch. Back to CSPs again. How can CSPs begin the process of automating operations processes themselves? Again, automation uh, is, uh, is uh, still strictly related to the ability to be agile, flexible, quick to the market, serve better the customers. Why? Reducing the human touch, they can, uh, they can instantiate in real time uh, new services. They can better prevent service jeopardization and at the end of the day, again, better serve customers that today are used to a different paradigm when they approach digital services. The way they consume digital service is different from the way uh, customers uh, are, uh, were used to consume communication services in the past. Thank you. OSS, traditionally always been a highly proprietary domain all the way through. How will automation and new AI and intent-based networking change the shape of the OS industry we've known for all these many past years? Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a question that is embedding many questions. So let, let me start from the beginning, uh, the, 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 the discussion about proprietary, not proprietary, standard, not standard, okay? Yeah. So that the time of proprietary stuff, of proprietary solution is gone because as long as we put in place proprietary stuff, we are just avoiding automation. Automation uh, is, uh, is happening at the moment we have openness and in the moment we have openness we have even composability and then we allow, we enable new services, new stuff to be pushed to the market, uh, to the market more quickly. So the first, uh, let's say, the first assumption is no more proprietary, no more proprietary stuff. Then the moment we, we move to the, to the automation and the, the moment we move to artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence is just another technology, okay? So what we need to understand is how to maximize the return of this technology for the final target. The final target is to reduce the cost to operate the infrastructure and, and the network. And that's exactly what we are currently doing at Hewlett Packard Enterprise. We are putting in place the solutions that are leveraging artificial intelligence, machine learning, on top of our usual legacy OSS, uh, OSS portfolio. And this is the way, you know, you take a new technology and you use this new technology to automate more and to spend less in, uh, in operating, in operating the, the, the network and the services. Thank you. How is HPE itself helping its legacy OSS customers evolve their operations and business systems and process to take advantages of automation? I like the word evolution. I, work, I like the word evolution because this is a time where there is a still a push in the industry for new big monolithic greenfield, uh, greenfield stuff. I don't think, I don't think we have uh, the affordability to go greenfield, big stuff, monolithic, and I don't think we have neither the time to wait for this big stuff to be, to be deployed. So it's really a matter to evolve. Continuously taking care about uh, the legacy heritage in terms, again, of uh, network and, uh, and, and services, and prepare the ground for the more digital that all we want to be sold by, by this industry. And, the, the, you know, the final, the finish line, the final target is in front of us, is, is, a, is a 5G, right? 
we, we are all preparing the industry to run 5G in a way that must, and I repeat, must be completely different from the past. Last question to you. What are the differentiators in the OSS portfolio that created that much traction and that much market recognition throughout the OSS domain? In OSS, we have a, we have a very comprehensive uh, portfolio. So our offering uh, is really covering, uh, let's say, almost, uh, uh, almost the, entire, the entire scope, the entire domain. But in this moment, we have a very hot in the market, we have a lot of traction on two specific topics. There is a lot of traction related to service orchestration, and there is a lot of traction related to artificial intelligence applied to, to, network, uh, to network operation. On service orchestration, it is uh, because with our uh, completely disruptive approach based on intent-based uh, intent modeling of the digital services, we are allowing our customer to manage hybrid network, partially physical and partially virtualized, and at the same time, we allow them to put on top of this network new digital over-the-top services to increase to increase their, uh, their top line and their revenue. Back to the initial question related to monetization. So our service orchestrator is doing this and is taking care even of the closed loop, is, is even taking care of the quality that customers are perceiving. So the intent-based service modeling is exactly this, is the ability of our software of automatically reconfigure the service in order to constantly guarantee to the end customer the experience that is signed at the moment, uh, at the moment of the product uh, subscription. When we move to intelligent assurance, that is our product, leveraging artificial intelligence and machine learning in the network operation center, it is just closing, uh, it is just closing the loop. So the, the, the moment we designed this software, we had just one thing in mind. Is it possible to replace some of the work done today by a network engineer with, with a software? And this was due not just, you know, it's not just related to the trivial cost reduction, just, you know, you replace a man with a machine, the machine will cost less. It's not just that. This is, a, a, this is an industry that is suffering of skills shortage. The ability to find uh, engineers able to work in network, uh, in network operation I, 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 is, not, uh, is, not, uh, is not trivial, right? So we built this uh, software. And at the end, this uh, software is a software that is able to work on the big data stored on whatever data lake our customer have and out uh, of this uh, data lake to extract the situation. But the good thing is that these situations are, are then used by our automation engine in order to activate actions in the network and to automatically address the inconsistency, the problems, so on and so forth. I usually, I usually uh, count this, uh, this story to better explain. It's not just a matter to listen to the weather forecast and understand that tomorrow will rain. Because unfortunately, I'm typically stupid. And my wife is always shouting at me because uh, the following morning, I'm forgetting to put an umbrella in my bag. Right. So our software, our software suite is doing exactly this. It's not only forecasting tomorrow rain, it's even putting umbrella in the bag, in the bag of, the, of the network operation, in the bag of the network operation team. And this will allow them to increase the level of automation to focus more uh, on the on the customer related issue and to improve at the end of the day the customer the customer experience on the service they are providing good analogy domenico convertino thank you very much indeed thank you